again. Well, let's see what happens here in Instagram land for everybody. If not, this is why I need a producer. We're not making headway, guys. Uh, we, Jaron Allen, how you doing? All right, guys, is it is it sounding better? Can you hear me now? Um, I'm hoping, oh, good, it's loud and clear, right on. Des Tavard says, we could use a little mental health today. All right, well, that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. Seriously gonna be talking about some mental health issues because I woke up in a good mood. I don't know how, I have to go to the dentist today for my second half of my deep cleaning. For those of you guys who, um, who have been following along, and uh, I do want to talk about mental health today. Hippie of the Hills, how you doing? Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. So I'm seeing more and more reports come out and more and more people coming to the conclusion that social media is not good for their mental health. Do you believe this, guys? Where have these people been? We, <laughs> I think, now, if you follow me, if you follow The Art of Charm, you listen to our show over the last 15 years, we have been talking about this for quite a long time. Jennifer says, oh no, maybe better, uh-oh. Oh, I hope so. Um, and so, I'm laughing because the thing about it is social media has an, a monopoly on our emotions. Why? Why do they have a, a monopoly on that? Because we spend so much time looking at our screen. So let me give you a few examples. Like, I don't know how many of you guys look at your watch time on your phone, like with, with iPhone, it gives you your watch time of how much you've been on social media. Now, because our company is a digital media company, I spend a lot of time on social media. Too much time, I'm working on trying to, to get it down. But for, for ads, for doing the live, I'm on Twitter a lot. Uh, <clears throat> I've basically given up on Facebook because it's unusable at this point. But, all right guys, Jennifer said she's coming over to Instaland because it's a little bit too choppy. I'm sorry to hear that. Let me, I'm gonna see if I can start it again and see if that happens. Jen, did that happen? <clears throat> so, um, and with that, I mean, because we're in, a, in the middle of a, an election year, and if we're spending over three, four hours a day on social media, I mean, when I get my report at the end of the day, I'm, I'm on social media, like, way too long. I don't even, in fact, I don't even want to say... <laughs> how, how long a day I spent on social media. Tally says Twitter's the new bathroom wall. Yes, it is. It's just, it's all garbage. And there is no reason that I should be spending over three hours a day on social media. Now, I also want to say that three hours is a lot. It's too much. But I, you know, but I, I, I have marketing campaigns and things that I'm running. And I'm usually, uh, for the art of charm, I'm usually the face out front. I'm doing a lot of um, uh, chatting with people and engaging in our social media. So I'm trying to find a fine line to be able to handle it better because I'm not handling it better. But my point in that is I understand its risks and I understand that it that it is also how people find us 
But it has gotten way out of hand. And more and more people are coming to the realization that it's affecting our mental health. I can't remember what podcast I was listening um, to. I can't remember the host, but they had li- they had blankly, bluntly just stated that social media is driving us all crazy. And I, I cannot deny that claim. I only see evidence observable uh, and observable anecdotal and statistically data driven uh, information that that tells us that this stuff is is a mental health concern now more and more people are dropping out of social media or at least being more cautious of how they are using it but think about how let's take facebook i you know they know when you interact they know when you interact and how you interact with the content on its platform it's all data driven it's all captured And they understand when you're angry and when you're emotional and when you're sharing things. I mean, this is what got us in all this trouble. You know, what's interesting about this is that the 2016 election showed a, show a a giant wedge between how people were using social media. The information that was now being put out wasn't able to be controlled. So you would only, it would only make sense that in this election, that, that battleground that is social media has only heated up. Now, as you guys know, I try to stay as apolitical as possible because I think that everyone at the top is, is pretty corrupt and, and I'm not privy to that information. I can only focus on what I'm doing one day at a time and I suggest that you guys all do that as well. But I understand, I can see when certain sides, certain information is being muddled, confused. I can see different narratives that are being played out. The information, the stories that they, the sides want us focusing on. I mean, it's, none of this is covert. All you have to do is look at it from an objective place. Uh, and and looking for both stories, both narratives, and they're they're it's it's in plain sight, along with a million other narratives. How do you not get sucked in and play the game by focusing on what actually really matters in your life? And I will tell you what actually really matters in your life. It is you and your loved ones, and your immediate surroundings. And the only way that to withdraw from, from the, the information chaos and the, and the bickering and fighting that they want you to be involved in is to detach yourself and make your best, make yourself into the best that you can possibly be. That's right. Mod General Jen is here. Ah. <laughs> uh, um, so, yeah, I guess they're having problems over. I'm going to turn that off. Anyway, so So anyway, there, these narratives are going on. The only way the only thing that you can do if you want to be a value to yourself and the world around you of being a better place. Don't get involved in either manipulative narrative bullshit game plan because that's exactly where they want you to be. Detach, focus on yourself, make yourself the walk into the best version of yourself so that you can avoid the, the, emotional pool of thinking that you are in doomsday scenario 
Why do I say doomsday scenario? Because if both sides, if either side of the political emotional pull can get you to think that your way of life is, is in an existential crisis and that your what you believe in is in an existential crisis, then, then you're going to vote. You're, you're going to be mo motivated to getting off your ass and actually doing something. Now, you should vote. You should exercise that right. And there's plenty of elections where, at, at a local level where your vote actually matters. But if you detach from the insanity and the nonsense and focus on yourself, number one, you are better all around, which makes your life better, which makes your immediate surroundings better, which makes your relationships better, which makes your world better. And number two, you can have a laugh at the, the show that is going on. Now, I brought up the idea of doomsday scenarios because that's, we have moved to a place in the information period, in the information age, where it is only doomsday scenarios that, that actually get you off your ass and move you. So now that's where we are. That's what we're playing with. Uh, blocking all around the clock, Tully. That's right. FBI, <laughs> Facebook causes divorces. Yes, absolutely. So, so the reason being is by focusing on yourself, moving into your best version, you can watch the show going on around you and have a laugh because it's not worth your mental health is at stake. And, and, and that's just where we are. And as I mentioned, the more effort and energy, okay. So imagine you looked at your time on social media yesterday and realized that you spent five hours on social media. I mean, for a lot of us, that's, that's a, a small part of our day anymore. Imagine if you spent one hour of that five improving yourself, one hour in the gym, or one hour in reading, or one hour in, in creating rather than consuming packaged doomsday scenario messaging that is there to make you upset and full on anxiety ridden, scared animal in the corner. How about that? And if you take that one hour a day and you multiply it by every day of the week, you're that much better. Doomsday scenario starts to become more of a joke than a fight that you're in that you have no control over. Murder hornets. Murder tally. Murder hornets were so. <laughs> murder hornets were so may. <laughs> you are. You've been passed by by time, Tally. You've been. You've been. You've dated yourself, Tally. You need to be. You need to be hip and with it with us kids, so you can even know what is going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, let's now that we've inched our way through the mental health crisis that we're all in. Yes, we're a sick society. We are having a mental health crisis. We were already having one and and the tech giants have decided to make it worse. Um and so with that, we <laughs> We are now in the doomsday scenario of information to get us 
to pull ourselves apart from each other. <laughs> Tally says, I always upgrade my chip tech. I don't know. Your chip tech is malfunctioning. You're still in May. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was April. I can't remember. So much has happened. Murder Hornets, that is, that is so, so, so long ago. <laughs> Prepare for July's alien invasion. I'm welcoming it, uh, Mr. Swalker. Welcome for all the aliens to come in and to take control. Maybe they'll have a better narrative. All right. So um, where were we? All right. So we moved through the, the national, international mental health crisis that big tech has put us all in. We're now riddled with anxiety. We are disassociating ourselves from our family and friends. And we are in a constant state of panic. Oh, nice, real, real good. That's gonna, that's gonna do well for the fabric of society. And now, now, and with our mental health crisis, they're going to project doomsday scenarios in order to get us to move in a certain direction. Well, how do you think this ends, guys? It doesn't end well. So, plan. Here's the plan. We focus on ourselves. We detach from media. We reattach ourselves back to the family and friends who are interested in making themselves and their world around them better. We tell social media to go screw themselves. And then we all start looking for our X factor. That's right, X factor. What is our X factor. I will tell you what your X factor is. Your X factor is the innate ability that you have within yourself that you must find, develop, and learn how to use so that you can tap into the unique quality that makes you special, different, exciting, attractive, and a catalyst for change in yourself and the world around you. When you find your X factor and you tap into it and you begin to develop it, no one in the world can stop you from reaching your goals. And I will tell you this, my friends, Animal will back me up. He's going to second me and letting you know that when you find that X factor and you engage with that aspect of yourself and you enhance it, you go through the efforts of bringing it out and allowing your, you yourself as an individual to actually shine to the fullest of your abilities, well then you have just walked out of a doomsday scenario into a world creation scenario. Yes, one that you are in control of, one that you dictate the terms and the rules. Yes, the stronger frame dissolves the weaker one. If, if you have a society, let's say a neighborhood, where, where everybody is focused on development, strengthening themselves, reaching, discovering, and enhancing their own X factor, well then when you come together as a society, as a group, there is, there is nothing that you cannot fix change or dictate in your immediate area. <laughs> uh, Jen says, I've been detached from Twitter from a little bit and it's downright nice. Yes, it is. I've only checked in the Twitter to see how my posts go, to see if I need to engage with anybody. I have, I have backed off 
on, of Twitter. I'm tired of the gloom and doom messaging scenario. And it's grifting season. All the grifters have come out of the, of, of the woodwork to ramp up and get followers. Do you know if the minute you start engaging in one side of the information war that people start to look to you as a source of, of reliable information and then you're able to grab a bunch of followers? It's grifter season. You know that there is a lot of people who wait for grifter season every election cycle so they can clean house, make money, gain influence and persuasion. It's a game. What is, Charlie asks, what is your X factor? Well, you know, that's an, that's an interesting one. And I even, I even figured one of you, of course it was you, Charlie, who was going to ask, if I brought up the idea of X factor, that you were going to ask what my X factor is. Well, I would say my obsession with human behavior and cognition is my X factor. I love doing the research. I love doing the reading. I love using persuasion and influence and storytelling as, as tools to help people. I want people to be able to learn those, those talents and develop those talents within themselves. Why? Because the, the most important person that you're going to have to learn how to persuade and influence is yourself. Once you are able to persuade and influence yourself, then you are able to persuade and influence others. What do you have to persuade and influence yourself over? You, you have to learn how to persuade and influence yourself over your own natural chimp tech programming. That's right. The X factor is outside of your comfort zone. You wanna find your X factor? Then you have to start living outside your comfort zone. You have to start challenging yourself. You have to start consuming thought-provoking, aspiring and inspiring uh, materials that uplift you. <laughs> They're all, I love it. They're all calling you General Jen. That's a good name. I, I knew it would stick. You are my General Jen. Guys, you might actually, you might actually kidnap General Jen and she's going to, she might, because she makes fun of you Instagram people. She thinks where it's at is over in Periscope. But the few times that she's been over in Instagram, she has commented how, what a friendly, awesome societal uh, silo we have over here. So perhaps you can kidnap her. He's in his element today. <laughs> well, thank you, Tally. I'm serious, guys. You know, everyone spends a little bit too much time in wondering what everyone else is doing. This has been the quintessential aspect of the disease and mental health deteriorating aspect of social media. What is everybody else doing? What is everybody else doing? I'll tell you what everyone else is doing. Everyone is <laughs> too busy being angry at everybody else. What? How about this, guys? I have been saying on this show for an, an incredible amount of time about how we need to be able to avoid toxic people. People who are just not interested in being their best selves and people who would make you feel bad for wanting to be at your best self, for wanting, for you wanting to find your X factor and use it to your advantage to make your life better and the immediate world around you. And for anybody to give you a, a hard time or to talk smack on being an aspirational character to yourself and the world around you, that's the toxicity of 
stuff to avoid. You know, and and I'm there is going to be a lot of casualties in this information war. People who are losing their damn minds. That's right. Why? Because they have never grounded themselves in any real sense of reality, have done any uh, discovering of who they are and how they think and how they want to move, maneuver through the world around them. If you don't have those things on lock, then you're easily manipulated. There's the old saying, which is, those who stand for nothing will fall for anything. What do you think that means? If you have a, a, a fundamental floor for, for your rules and boundaries and how you maneuver through the world and how you treat the people that are around you, giving them value, if you don't set up that floor, how can you tell when you've been taken off of it? This is ridiculous. And, you know, it's upsetting that we are losing people to the mental health crisis that is going on around us right now. Do you actually think that the media, the media and social media and the mainstream entertainment complexes actually care about our mental health? No, they care about the next dollar. If they can turn you into a zombie that will, that will binge on their platforms, they win. They want zombies who are binging on their platforms. That's, <laughs> you know? So, I, here's what's awesome though. You guys are awesome. Animal's awesome. You know why? Because... We are not willing or able to be manipulated because we see the game that is being played. If you're able to see the game being played, then you're also able to detach from it and watch with amusement. That's what I plan on doing. And while I watch with amusement, I'm going to continue to sharpen the X factor within me that makes me happy, that makes my world better, which in turn makes my immediate proximity and friends and family's worlds better. That's what we need to be focusing on. All right, now, I'm gonna go through the comments. You guys are rad. If you like to hear what I had to say today and you want to discover your X Factor, well, check out the Art of Charms Communication Accelerator the link is in the link tree in the bio of Twitter, Instagram, in the description of YouTube. It has all of our best stuff from persuasion, connection, and networking in, um, <clears throat> from our online classes, our live training programs, and all of our expert guests over the last 15 years. Jaron Allen, you're awesome. Thank you for tuning in, buddy. Estefan, good to see you, buddy. General, my General Jen is very amused. Good to see you over in Instagram. They are welcoming you. Uh, <clears throat> that will cause insanity. I'm telling you. Jen says it's cozy over here. That's because the Instagram crowd is a good crowd, is a rad crowd. They get it. <laughs> they spilly with X factors. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, Jen. I'm, I'm trying on a daily basis here. We create our own realities to a great extent. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. It's all perspective. You can also dictate your reality and your happiness within that reality. You can also choose different realities that have a direct effect on your well-being. Yes, I know. Crazy talk. Guys, it's, it's basic psychology. Everyone is playing the psychology game. The media is playing the game. Social media is playing the game. Your government is playing the game. But guess what? You can also play the game for your own well-being. 
get get on it. Get with it. That's what's important. Don't allow them to play the game on you. You play your own game. Ricky Mahardy, how you doing, buddy? How is it down there in San Diego? Karen Chameleon, it's good to see you. Mr. Swacker, prepare for July's alien invasion. Yes, I know it's coming. <laughs> Lee Kenton, murder hornets? Well, those have already been here and gone. Unless we get a second wave. Is that what we're talking about? A second wave? All right, guys, I gotta get a head out of here. I gotta go to the dentist. Um, and thank you, Jared Allen. You guys are rad. Remember, you can play this game too. You can play it on yourself. Why? Because your well-being counts on it. All right, guys, catch y'all later.